Hey guys, welcome to another video and today we are going to do final, probably final setup of our uh, video player. So first of all we need to do one setup that I noticed before. Uh, let's say beyond dev CD server load mon Slash test, and this was the video that we made yesterday. A small video player. <laughs> can mute with the space bar or play. Can this control audio? Better mode. Normal back mini player. Back full screen. Let's play that game. Okay, we can add another functionality. So, that another functionality will be, you know, once the video finished playing, we can change this uh, pause play button to refresh button, you know, kind of like a reload button. It will force the video to be played again. We'll just say, yeah, second should be zero, stuff like that. And we'll just see, we'll just do that afterwards. But for now, I'm just focusing on the main things. So, well, the main thing is once we, you know, go into this video thing. I will just select the, uh, a different video. Okay. Because uh, I think it will not be much noticeable here because here we have uh, the black bars. What I exactly want to do, you know, once we actually hover into this thing here, I want to have a little bit of black uh, bar. And a, kind of like a black shadow coming out of this tool, you know, out of this control section. So we'll exactly get to know, yeah, this is a control section, so yeah. And uh, to do so, we actually have to add a few additional CSS that I didn't mention before because uh, we didn't really much talk about this, you know, uh, this uh, control section itself. Now, what, but now what you're going to do, we will, be, we will be adding that thing right now, okay? Well, that is not much of a, you know, uh, hard thing that we have to do is just a basic. We uh, will be applying. Um, we'll apply just basic before effect into this thing, and we we'll just have like a color, kind of like a black thing like that. So let's go back and let's go to the global OCSS here. Let's go to our video container because we'll be adding this to our window video control container. So video controls. video control container here exactly here I want to add a dot before effect actually before effect video control container I'm gonna add a before effect so like before you know before effect just usually works with when you do something with that thing it should just show you a little bit of you know whatever you have in the before in CSS in class before CSS mm, ah, what do we see that Styling, it will show up that thing. And then, first of all, let's say our content is going to be nothing. So, it, it needs some content. So, we'll say content is going to be nothing. And this position should be absolute, whatever we're going to do right now. In the before effect, you can also add some text using CSS. Yeah. Let's say bottom is going to be zero because I want this thing to be exactly uh, starting from the very zero. You know, actually, exactly to be on the zero position of this, you know, control panel. And the background. Is a little bit complicated. I will just say. So we need a linear gradient background. Okay, I'll just say linear gradient background. And what it has to have, it we need to say first of all to the top. I want this thing go from the bottom to the top, and it has to be an RGBA. It means red, green, uh, blue, alpha. So we're gonna we're not going to have anything of these. I just want to have a little bit of alpha. So points out of alpha means you know it's going to have a kind of like a blackish color. Alpha just you know. For managing the darkness stuff like that and we want this thing to be actually a transparent so we should be able to see our you know our uh, video controls and I want the width to be 100 percent so that we make sure this you know kind of like a uh, blackish layer should be covering over all of our video control on the on the downside okay and this thing is only going to show up till our video control section you have to make sure you want to uh, you know keep that thing in mind and then we need the 
you dimension somewhere expect ratio. We didn't. So now here we need to mention the expect ratio. I have done few you know testing here and there and I found that expect ratio 6 by 1 is being perfect for us. So we will be using expect ratio 6.1. Okay. One second. Let me put my mobile phone on charge. Okay. And then it is a ZDNX. So basically we want the we don't want the it to have kind of like a, that type of ZDNX that it should count you know that it should be over over things. So basically if we give it the ZDNX more than we give our video control container, we will not be able to click on any of our options because it is going to you know be over every single thing. We need to give the ZDNX more like minus one, negative one, negative two, something like that. So now if I go to here. I think it's kind of unnoticeable, isn't it? Okay, let's get a different video. Let's say, I'm gonna get some random video, white video. White video. One minute. Whitewakemate.com. It's gonna quickly download the video. I'll be pasting this inside of our Edwin and Tube server. Actually, client section. Uh, public. In the name of video.mp4. MKV. We'll just rename this to MP4, and I hope it is okay. Good. You, you, are you seeing this kind of like you know little bit of uh, this shadow kind of thing? If I go out, it will just disappear. This is what I was talking about. If we go in, it will just uh, come there. If we go out, it will just disappear. But the one problem with this thing is, if I click here, it will not pause the video. If I click upside, it will pause the video. If I click here, it will not pause the video. So for that, we need to say all the pointed events should be none. It doesn't have to listen to any pointed events. It doesn't have any control over doing anything. So now if I click here, it should be able to pause it, okay? It should be able to, able to pause it, play it, pause it, play it, pause it, play it, pause it, play it. Great. I know this video is the, it's not a good video. Still a video, one minute. Silver color video. Gold color video one minute. Oh come on, you to be shit. Let's get this one. Client side. I'll then into client. Public, gonna paste it, delete it, video, and done. I do a refresh. You can see a little bit of this thing coming up, and this is what exactly Yeru does. Manage these things, right? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely great. <laughs> let's go back here now. Let's. It's time to add the timeline in here. So we're gonna add a timeline. That timeline is just going to be uh, above our video control section. 
so we already added a timeline container but we didn't edit anything here till now right so now we need to add something in the timeline container what are we gonna add first of all just say add a timeline div just the empty div for the timeline and then okay what else do we need say another div with a thumb indicator for now we're gonna have kind of like a div for the thumb indicator it's just going to make you know a little bit of like once we move around move around over we will just scroll over scroll over timeline right here and there it should just move along the way we are moving so that's only it has to do that's the only thing that has to do right move here and there move here and there okay great now let's add css for our timeline timeline container so basically the css is going to be timeline and we need to add it a, uh, a kind of like a background color so we'll just add a kind of background color more like as kind of like a silverish color let's say background color is going to be rgba as usual but this time everything is going to be 100 100 and alpha is going to be 0.5 We'll give the height of three pixels, and uh, we'll give the width of 100 percent. So height is just like you know a height, or how much height it should have. We we'll get a height of three uh, three pixels as normal, and width is going to be 100 percent. So it it should it should cover up our whole video. And let's say position is going to be relative. Okay. Okay, nothing shows up, shows up for now, right? Because we need to do a few additional more things, right? We need to add a before and after effect for this timeline and how do we add the before and after effect so one second we added this timeline here uh oh yeah 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 no 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 I need to add a timeline container container I need to set up my timeline container first of all I need to set my height is going to be first and pixel for my timeline container so this timeline is inside this timeline container this timeline can have a red color silver color depending on what we are doing but this timeline container will actually have over timeline I forgot to mention this. We'll have a margin in line of mm, kind of like a maybe a dot five frame margin in line. You just like you know, you're gonna have a little bit of margin in line. So I'll just show you. Say so first is going to be pointer, and our display is going to be flex. We'll just want to make sure all everything, everything, every uh, our container is centered. About this timeline, container is centered. I mean, it should, not, it should not be on the right side of the display or the left side of the display. It should be just basically centered. You can see a little bit of this thing right here. This is our timeline. I know it's unnoticeable for now, but yeah, this is our timeline. A little bit of this thing, it's timeline. This thing. Exactly this thing. <laughs> it's so unnoticeable to be honest. But once we add that red button, it should be noticeable. Probably, you can see this little thing. It's our timeline. Great. Now we'll add a before effect for our timeline. What exactly our before effect is going to have? It is going to have our. Uh, okay, so let me just see this. Thing. Our before effect is just going to have you know how much video we have watched. That thing. So we're gonna have some like content is going to be empty. Position is going to be absolute and we're gonna have a left of zero top of zero bottom zero we'll keep it the right way okay because the timeline before is going to be like how much video we have still watched is going to be a similar color so we need to have our right side a little, a little bit more specified so what do we mean by having a right side specified so We'll not actually give our preview position in here. We'll actually give our preview position in a variable that we'll define in a JavaScript section. I will show you how we do that. We can have a set property stuff like that. So I will just show you. And I have right first first number. Ashizor. Okay. So it's going to be calculated. Basically, we're going to say calculate first of all our hand on person. We're going to uh, decrease it with our variable, which is going to be uh, probably our progress uh, position, like how much we have progressed, multiply by 100%. So basically what we're doing, we're just saying, yeah, we're going to have a progress position, like how much video we have already watched. We're going to first of all, multiply it with 100%, whatever we have. So we will get something in here, in the, uh, like some percentage in here, 
So after getting the percentage, we'll just subtract that percentage with about 100 percent. 100 percent is just like a, our total progress. So whatever we get at the end is just going to be exactly what we need to get. Okay. And actually, uh, progress position. We need, to, we need to just say this as preview position, like how much position we have already, you know, previewed. Like scroll down and watch this thing. Like we're just scrolling our cursor here and there over the timeline. So just just like that. And then we will have a background color for this thing. It's gonna be have a background color of RGB, RGB. Say 150, 150, 150. That seems fair. What is this? So it's kind of like a silver color, but a little bit more lighter version of silver. Before we added a timeline, we added a little bit darker version of the silver. So yeah. Because we added all of them as hand run, hand run, hand run. So now we're going to add a, say, by default display is going to be none. But just to show you guys, I will just keep the display as whatever it is for now. We do a refresh. Okay, we get to see the time as none. So I know there isn't much of a thing you will notice for now because our previous position is being none. Nothing. If I had a 0.25 here. As you can see now, I added 0.25 here, and this thing actually got a little bit, got a little bit of light. Uh, you know, see this portion got lighted. So this is exactly what we will be doing. I'm gonna say, yeah, I'm gonna watch this thing, and you know, all of the videos we have some kind of this thing, like you know, yeah, this much is loaded stuff like that. Say it, nothing. Say so display is going to be by default none because we only want to call this thing once we. Are ready to call it and then we have a timeline after in the after we're gonna have basically the same thing content is going to be like that position is going to be absolute top is going to be zero left is going to be zero bottom is going to be zero but the right is going to be calculated and one person minus our variable Progress position multiplied by hand on person. The background is going to be red. Okay. So if I do like 0.25 here. And now this is exactly how much we have watched. So this looks the way. And then we have that, you know, preview thing like that. So it will just show you how much video is still watched, stuff like that. Let's go back here. Okay, we have a preview position like that. Good. How much video we have loaded yet? So then we have our thumb indicator. Thumb indicator is just going to be like you know we hover over that our video and it's going to have a little bit of thumb indicator like where we currently are at because we don't want to uh, know where we are are at in the video according to our uh, red line but according to our thumb like the little circle. I think. We have a timeline dot thumb indicator. I'm gonna, get it, I'm gonna have it as a. I'm gonna have. I'm gonna use a scale variable. So we're gonna have use another uh, CSS to actually manage the scale variable. Scale variable. But we we're, we're just gonna say yeah, this is scale variable, and I wanna do stuff with this using the scale variable. Okay. So scale variable will, will only be shown once we want it to be shown. It's going to have a position of absolute. We're gonna have a transform effect. And translate x on the y axis, we want to have a minus 50%. It's just going to be like you know, minus 50% smaller. And when I use a scale effect for variable using our scale, it is going to be by default zero, which means it is going to be disappeared. I want our height to be 200% because our circle should be you know, twice the size of our timeline. So we can actually see, yeah, we are currently as something. It's just going to be a circle that is going to be twice the size of our timeline. 50% uh, more on the top side, 50% more on the bottom side. When I say top is going to be 50% less than 50%, so I'll just show you that thing in a minute. Can I have this preview of this thing? No, we cannot have it yet. So basically, we're just saying uh, we're going to have a little, you know, we're not exactly going to be on the top, we're going to have a 50% uh, down on the top position. So I know this thing doesn't make sense, but actually, guess what? Guess what? I made this thing before and I just remember both those things, so I'm just doing what I know. I say variable 
uh, we're gonna have your preview position. No, pre not preview progress position. We need to have your well, progress position. This uh, little dot is going to be like how much we have progressed. According to that, it's going to be on that position. The background color is just going to be red. The border radius is going to be 50%. I'm going to have a transition effect on this thing. When it's come back or goes out. So it's going to have a transition effect on transform. 150ms. Is and out. So basically for now, transform is just is having a scale variable, which is 0. So it will never show up. I'm going to have it, its expect ratio as 1 by 1. So it, it should be... Uh, perfectly centered. Now what I want to do, I want to have, I want to make something that should be able to manage the scale, right? We need to have something, basically. So that thing is just going to be our timeline container. If someone hovers over it, what I want to do, I want to say my thumb indicator scale should become 1. That's what I exactly want to do. You can see something is happening here. Something later is happening here. You may not notice this exactly, but it is happening there. And that's what we were trying to do. I mean, not really, but still better than nothing, right? Now we need to set up a few more things. So we got that thing right there. Communicator. Okay, did we miss something? We got the position transform. Set up the height correctly. Uh, preview position. Progress position. So if I have it like 0.25, okay, it's not looking good. It's not looking good as we want it to look like. Progress position, and then we have it multiplied by 100%. Uh, 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 uh. Let me think about this thing. What we can do to actually make it look good. Um, so we basically just added this uh, time communicator in our timeline. And the thumb indicator just being. Let me think about this thing. Thumb indicator is inside of a timeline. Oh, it's like that. Just like that. And. It shouldn't be this small. I mean, I'm mentioning height as 200 percent. Why is it small then? It just change change the distance, right? So if I have your nothing, your nothing also, it's going to be on the very start point. I hope so. Okay, yeah, it's, it's being on the start point. Maybe if I say scale two. Yep, scale two is doing it. Nice. That's what we wanted, right? Great, 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 great. So now what we want to do, we actually want to set up over, you know, actually JavaScript that will like exactly, you know, once we are going through a video from here to there, it should exactly do things that we want it to do. Okay. All right, let's go in the index.jsx. So now what we want, what I want to do basically, uh, let me just see what I need to do. What is our timeline container? We need to have a ref for this thing. Timeline container.
constant timeline constant is going to be a user ref hook another one for managing our timeline so basically yeah living with our timeline container and then we probably need only our timeline container in this case okay mm, do we need to do, do, do anything with our thumb indicator I'm not sure let me just see do we need anything about with our thumb indicator no really because probably our thumb indicator uh, should be managed with our what do we say mm, using our the you know Using our CSS, perfect. Okay, one second, guys. Oh, really? We actually forgot to add the playback speed section. Let's first of all add the playback speed section. Because timeline is a little bit complicated stuff. I'll get some time. I will just go around and add, so add the playback speed section. And after we are done with that thing, actually, playback speed is ultimate basic. I will be honest with you. I mean, there's literally nothing we have to add in the playback speed. Just the one div and nothing else. Okay? Let me show you exactly. Let's go to our control section and we'll add the playback speed after our normal duration of our total time, not this one. We have the mini player. So just before the mini player section, we're going to have a button. This button is just exact, actually going to have a class name, so I'm going to have a class name of maybe speed BTN. A wide btn those two classes by default it's going to have a value of 1x have a ref of playback ref okay that we go for the playback ref and now what exactly we want to do here I think we should first of all add some CSS for this thing, okay? I mean, the CSS is ultimate basic, we don't have to add much of a thing, just a bit. Just a bit. We need say video control container, right? And then inside of our controls, where our button is having the property of wide BTN. What I want to have, I want to have a width of 50 pixels around that. Whoa. Here. Now, what I want to do, I want to add a few little bit of JavaScript for this thing, playback speed. So, playback speed JavaScript is going to be ultimate basic. I don't even think, I mean, it does need anything else. And it doesn't. It does need a ref. I don't know if it needs a ref or not. Let us total playback and let's get rid of this. Okay. Constant toggle playback is playback is going to be a function like that. Okay. So first of all, we will make a uh, new playback rate, something like that. We'll say uh, new play back rate is just going to be like or video dot current dot Playback rate. So basically, this playback rate is going to return us uh, uh, other uh, either 0 0.25 or 0 0.50 or 0 0.75 or 1, which is normal. Then we have a 0 0.1.25, 1.50, or 2, and then we have repeated 0.25 stuff like that. Okay. We can we can increase the speed playback speed, but I think this much should be enough for us. So we'll just say by default once we toggle this thing, what we should we'll want to do we want to keep adding. 0.25 will play back, right? If it's two, then I want to add. I want to just, you know, make it. Uh, if it's two, I want to make it 0.25. So we'll have the, I will add the condition. We'll say, if our new playback speed just became is greater than two, that means 2.25. Then I want our new playback speed to playback rate to be actually 0.25 because we know after adding 0.25 to two will become 2.25. But YouTube just has till two rate, and if I click. On playback speed after two, it, it, it should just become 0.25. So let's say video dot current dot 
playback rate should be equal to our new playback rate and our I guess we need the ref because I need to you know change the text in here right exactly playback ref constant playback ref is equal to equal to use ref I would say playback ref dot current dot text content should be equal to our current speed which is exactly going to be new playback rate x get to see here this thing we can just manage it like that and it should be playing the video according to accordingly faster ultimate slow it will pass and do faster. The fastest. Holy crap! Holy crap! <laughs> so we have this timeline. We need this timeline exactly. Oh wait, scale 2 is just a little bit too big. One second. Where's our thumb indicator? I suppose the thumb indicator having a height of one scale of two I mean we don't need top 50 percent for now scale of two is just doing it it's not needed I was just doing some try and catch methods before and it was working pretty fine but we'll see in the future but because for now this thing is working great, okay? It's looking great. Not working great, I'm gonna say looking great. So there we go, that's about uh playback section. And now comes time for the real deal breaker. Okay. For the timeline, what is going to happen? I'll just explain you exactly what's gonna happen. Let's suppose we watch this video. And when I when I'm hovering over this video, you can see this little bit of image, image. We're probably having a different image after every five seconds, right? Five to to do, which means well, now we're gonna have image at uh three, four, five, six, seven, at two point two seven. Exactly. So they are taking image out of the video after every five seconds, and you may ask, like, okay. Do we do I also have to do that thing? Well, I mean, you actually have to do that thing because we don't have any much for things. So we need to use FFmpeg. We need to do extra processing of the video, and we need to take a uh, preview of, out of the video after every five seconds, like a snapshot of out of the video after every five seconds. It's going to take a lot of time, but it's going to be worth it, man. I told you. So for that, we're going to be we'll be using a Kind of like FMPG code, and I will exactly show you what a FMPG code is. That one second. Okay. Go back. So we'll be using a little bit of FFMPG code, and that code is exactly being something like uh. Let me open my desktop and let me open my. I'll learn YouTube. I know the code. I'll go to client. I'll go to public. I'll just open my CMD here. Or you can see open terminal here. So we'll be actually setting up this code in the backend later on. Like, you know, once the user is uploading the video, we want to show something like this. But I'm just showing you what exactly we want. We want to have a FFMPEG. And we'll take an input that is going to be our video.mp4 for now. And then we're going to have a VF means taking uh, uh, frames out of the video, and I want 
to take FPS. FPS should be you know one by five. After the five seconds, we want to take a photo of the out of the video, and then we'll have a scale. So this scale is going to be 150 uh, by minus one. I uh, 150. What do we say? 150 colon minus one. So 150 is just being about width. And minus one is just being of a height. Height should be automatically set it up, and width is just going to be 150 or 120, something like that. Okay. And then it's going to be the output location where we want to save this video. So I want to save this, not actually video. Now output location is going to be where we want to save our preview images. There are going to be a lot of images. So probably going to save them inside of our previous folder for now. But we'll set up a good logic for this thing also in the future. So I'll also just save them inside of our previous folder. And slash. Now here we need to have all of the image should have one, you know, different names. So what are we gonna say? We're gonna say uh, save them as a uh, preview percentage d dot p jpg. So this percentage d is exactly going to you know uh, add a number to the image, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Accordingly, how many images we generate? If I hit enter right now, they just said something happened. Okay. So you can see, these are our preview images out of the video, videos of uh, 60 seconds. So we got 12 images, which means uh, one image of after every 5 seconds. So this, these are all our preview images and we need to use them. This was, this was a small video, that's why it took uh, you know, little time. But if the video is going to be bigger, it's just going to take more time. And we want to make sure we compress these images somehow. One of them, kind of okay, compress because they are having one kilobyte for capacity so they don't even sum up to one megabyte like 32 kil kilobyte so if a video is about a lot bigger like in one hour it should take about a megabyte or two three megabytes but the processing speed processing is going to take a lot of time okay so with that thing beside said let's get into what we think now in the index of JS JS6 we only added our you know thumb indicator we also need to add our image, which is basically just going to have a source code of nothing because we're going to set it up using JavaScript, and we're just going to have a class name. Class name is just going to be preview img image. So basically, we're going to have those two things only. It's going to be a preview image and our thumb indicator. Preview image should be on the top of a thumb image indicator, like just like YouTube has. Okay, and then we're going to set up a little bit of uh, classes for our preview image, like stuff like that. So let's go to global .css. I say it as one for now, or two, or one. And now we'll say here. First of all, let's set up uh, this is for our preview image. We're gonna say go in, inside of a timeline. Yep. Go inside of a timeline, and then our preview image. Now we need to have its position as absolute. And I'm gonna hide it to be a, 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 a pause like 70, 80 pixels. And then we're gonna have an expect, ra expect ratio of 16 by 9. So 16 by 9 is you know, yeah, we are, what are we are seeing this uh, expect ratio should be 16 by 9. Like once you record a video, they ask for this expect ratio. Expect ratio is like how much of a screen should be covered inside this image. So I only I want it to, it to be 16 by 9. It's more like a 1080p, which is just going to be exactly you know a perfect expect ratio for the of little bit of previous to show up. That's exactly what we want. On the top to be minus one RAM. So we we'll just have a little bit of space on the top. And I'm gonna say a transform into translate minus fifty percent and minus hundred percent. So I want it to be a little bit, you know, kinda like a position should be different than a normal Okay, one second. How can I explain this thing to you? I think I have to show this thing to you, but I cannot show it. To you right now. Mm. Okay, look. So basically, we're just saying transform translate, right? One second, let me just explain it to you. Alrighty, guys. So basically, the thing was like I had to add this thing also here. So this is like you know when we hover over a timeline, it just should become something like you know a little bit more bolder. As you can see, it just it's this height is just increasing a little bit. You may not notice it, notice it. But you can see here, you're just increasing the height a little bit. So yeah, we need to do, we needed to do that thing. 
and uh, let's go back to where next adjacent. I just had you know those two things coming out. Let's go back. You can see now. Let me do a refresh. Now you can see we are having over this a uh, little bit of you know thing going on here. Okay, it's just being over over. So now what's happening? Why? Uh, basically this over red button is just being a little bit on the more top. We need to say minus top minus fifty percent. So just get inside it here. Okay, we already set it minus fifty percent. One second, let me just take a look at this one. Is minus fifty percent actually working? We said scale is zero, and then this, 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 this. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So first of all, we need to set up a few more things. Let me think about what we have to set up here. We set up our premium made CSS, and then we set up this thing. Um. Okay. What we need? What do we need? Timeline. Uh uh uh. We get the scaling going on right there. So basically, something is off. I'm not sure what is that, but. Um well, we will see this bug in the future. I mean, of course, they were going to bug. What else do we expect it to be perfect now? And another thing to mention here, we need to add a uh, outside of this video control container. We need to add another div that's going to be called uh, that's going to be an actually an away image. And this is going to be our class name. Going to be our thumbnail image. So basically, what is the thumbnail image doing? It is going to be like you know when you when we're just uh, going through our video, like when we're when we're actually just trying to hold this hold the when you're trying to hold this button and just move it right to left, left to right. We should see here a blurred image or something like that type of image of our actually video preview. So when we leave it, when we leave our button, the video just play, start playing. Okay. So that's about our uh, thumbnail image. Now we need to set up a little bit of CSS for it here. Okay. Thumbnail image is going to have a position of absolute because we will not be having any other divs inside here, so it can be absolute. Let's say top zero, right zero, bottom zero, and the left zero. And I want its width to be 100%, covering our full, uh, over whole div, and the height also 100%. And this place is going to be by default null, and that's until we don't want to show up a thumbnail image, right? Mm. Okay, this thing is good. This thing is good. Okay, here we had added. Transform translate minus 50 person and minus 100 person. So basically, we're just saying, yeah, we need to translate a little bit, you know. I mean, just like, you know, we need to keep it a little bit on the left side. And uh, we need the top to be a little bit, you know, on the top side. And we need the image to be a little bit uh, on, you know, a little bit on the top here. Get the transform. I'm gonna say on the left side, we're gonna have a calculator. Um. Well, now we need to have something here. So basically, this. Okay. So basically, what is happening here? We're just saying we need to have a left calculated version because this is going to be on the very left side by default, right? And once you start, you know, scrubbing stuff like that. We want this image position to be exactly wherever where our mouse is, like wherever our video is actually being scrub scrubbed to. 
scrubbing mean just like you know you're holding this thing you're just dragging it right and left and this should be centered according to what that thing we want it to follow that so we'll just here say get the variable we'll use a uh, set property in javascript to actually set this thing we'll say preview position we want it to be multiplied by 100 person so we will get our current percentage for the left section and then we have the border radius which is a little bit of border radius to radius should be fine like 0.25 frame and then border is going to be okay border end to end radius now 2 pixel solid white border and by default it display is going to be now so if I try to do this I should not see my that thing well something is definitely wrong here I will fix it afterwards, but for now, I just keep consider it on the timeline itself. Okay, so this was it for the CSS part. I try to not consider, you know, hide the display. This is what it looks like, and it, it looks okay. I mean, not the worst thing that I've seen. <laughs> so it's about the playback. Let me see timeline section. Now, when you set up a timeline section. So we can use two things. Um, so we can use two things. We, we can either either use uh, mouse pointer events or we can use directly mouse events so we need to use any of them the most pointed events will return us uh, the pointer ID that we can exactly get the you know if we put our uh, mouse pointer event listener on our video we can get the mouse you know x axis or the y uh, or x axis and then, then we can actually get our whole you know timeline uh, x axis wherever it's starting from we can subtract it and we can just get the whole our timeline width and we can just Divided using that, we will get the percentage of currently where we are. So it's a little bit complicated, but I know I'm going to try to make it as simple as possible. Okay. So first of all, what we're going to be doing here? First of all, we'll just set up one second. We need few refs. See, ref is going to be thumbnail img. Ref is going to be Preview image. How many gallery is not actually going to have any refs because okay, yeah, we'll not be actually dealing with much of a thing with the thumbnail indicator itself. Okay. Thumbnail image and the preview image. It's going to be use ref. We'll probably will be you know transferring all of these things into inside another component. Uh, this is a lot of junk and another is some review image use ref hook great now we need uh first of all when in the starting we need uh, two event the listeners or the other on our timeline container where's our timeline container okay timeline container we need two event listeners First email listeners is going to be it's going to be like you know uh, on mouse move on mouse move this email listener is going to be played toggle mouse toggle mouse move and an on mouse down which basically means you know we just left the mouse right there toggle mouse down toggle mouse move constant we need to get the event from here so either we can make it a we can make it an arrow function and we need to by default pass the e in here that's going to be a little bit more complicated or we can just call it as a function like that and we'll grab the e like this without even you know passing the e here that's the advantage of using normal normal functions so we need the event listener we need the event 
this image is going to this image is going to have our pointer mouse location to be exact okay so once we get those things what we have to do we need to first of all say toggle mouse move function is going to run this thing and then we have toggle mouse on so first of all let's set up our toggle mouse move what's going to happen so first of all what i need is exactly in my timeline container i need this timeline container i need it i need its uh rectangular rectangular size so we need for that we need to use the get bounding client rect if i will be exact with you I'm going to image we just go to in uh, inspect element I will say right click copy JavaScript path and it will just do like dot get okay what was the name get bounding client rect so this thing will return us something like that so what is actually happening it is returning us our x axis whatever our currently x is at which means the starting point y axis is like the height stuff like that and width is just this, this much is the width of our uh, timeline container and then top and we have uh, only those options. So all what we need, we only need the x axis and the width from this rect thing. Okay. We only need to do, deal with those two things. So we'll say ref is timeline container basically. I hope I already def uh, defined it upside right. In the toggle mouse move. What we're gonna do basically, I'm gonna say timeline container will just get it here. We'll say timeline container dot current uh, dot. Okay, one second. I'll say define this value inside a variable constant rectangular is going to be equal to uh, our timeline dot current dot get bounding client rect. This is the function. And now once we actually get the rectangular thing of that, we need to convert this thing into percentage. So in the E, we are getting the mouse movement, and in here in the rect, we're actually getting the, our you know our what do we say timeline container uh, positions. So now we have to say for getting the percentage, we'll say constant portion is going to be basically we'll say math dot minimum. So we're gonna here pass two values. Either the value is going to be our current mouse position, or this is going to be our rector width. So I'm going to have two values. I'm going to have either math the max of something, or we're going to have rect dot width itself. So what is going to happen? Why I'm just saying this thing? So there can be two, one condition. This is the condition number one. The condition number one here is just basically we move our mouse to the very right side of the video, outside of the video, and I don't want my percentage to be more than our rect width. Let's suppose our rect width is only one hand, one thousand pixels, and we move our you know mouse outside of the one thousand pixels, so it can be more than one thousand pixels. And we're saying no, and we now here just saying by saying math or minimum, it will select the, this one on the left side one. We're not just passing this you know width of of the video. We're just keeping a limit in there. And what do we want to put in this math or max function? Here we're gonna say either select zero, or what do we have to select? We need to select either zero, which means like why well, I'm selecting the zero? Let's say this is the same condition like this, but instead of being on the right side, we're being on the left side. So if our pointer goes, you know, our mouse pointer will put it on the left side of the video, like outside of the video section, we don't want to get negative uh, positions, negative values, right? So for that, what we're saying, we're saying either get the zero as the maximum number, or if zero is not the maximum number, then we get the maximum number. Then what the maximum number is going to be? Our e dot x, which means our current mouse location on the x-axis um, uh, will subtract it with our rect.x the position position on the uh, rectangular x-axis so what we're basically now doing here we're just saying you get the minimum uh, of all of these things either if we're on the way right side and the we're outside of the thing so basically it means this math max is going to be more than this rectal width right because we're outside of the rectal width we want to select the rectal width otherwise we're not like this one and in here we're just saying if we are uh, on the very left side of the video, which means we are outside of the video from the left side. Our positions, or uh, the values we get here, should be in the negative. But we want to say, if this is negative, then select the zero because zero is always going to be greater than negative numbers. That's why saying mad or max. And at the end, we have to say all divided by rect dot width to get the percentage of whatever we are doing here. 
Now, what do we have to do with this percentage? First of all, we need to get our preview image that we already generated, right? And for now, we have generated the image on the uh, client section itself, so we'll not be using much of a logic here. We'll just basically say constant uh, preview image number is going to be something like uh, math or maximum. Either it is going to be one image or they are going to be multiple images, okay? Okay, no, no, actually, not actually one image, I'm going to say. So what are we here we have to say, we need to say our page, what's our, what's our preview image number going to be? So we know our preview image, oh, okay, start from number one, right? So we need to have at least one, should be the uh, maximum number if there's uh, no other numbers left. So we want to be at least given it one. And if this is, and we still have other options, so what are we going to do in that options? We'll say math.floor, get the lowest value possibly from multiplying our percentage with our video dot current dot duration and then dividing all of them with five because okay, because we know that uh, we're getting the preview out of a video after every five seconds so that's we're saying divided by five and this is just the basic thing to get the percentage out of, of the video we're saying either normally we'll just say hey here I have like divided by maybe like one or we will not divide it anyway but we want to get percentage of every oh no we want this preview image to be shown after every five seconds different different images so that's why saying get the multiple the percentage with our current video duration like suppose percentage is going to be something and then I want to multiply it with our current video duration like not actually current video duration this uh, this video duration is going to be our video total length in seconds we're going to divide multiply it with that thing and divide it by five so we get our preview image number and now we have to set it. We sub, I was told here this is going to be preview image, right? So we'll just say preview image dot current dot src is going to be our preview image uh, final or source, something like that. We'll say constant preview image final is going to be backticks. Where is our image located? It's located in the public folder. We'll just say previews slash preview dollar preview image number, whichever it was, dot jpg. This is our image name, and that's what we are getting. After setting this thing up, what we have to say, we need to actually set this thing up in uh, our CSS because here we have a property preview position, right? This preview image will only be displayed according to the preview position. So what we want to do, we want to say uh, timeline container dot current. We need to add set a property such pro for t of preview position, and here the value is going to be our percentage or person basically. So this preview image will will be shown according to our person, right? That's exactly what we want to see. Okay, so we got the person right here. Okay, set property. Set a function. Timeline container. Oh, it has to be dot style dot set property. Preview none. Okay, is this saying like preview none? Why is it none? What we said here, it is going to be one for the preview image number or math of follower person multiplied by video dot duration divided by five. Person is just being our person is just being like math or max. Either zero or e dot x minus rec dot x or select it with rec dot width and divide all of these things. Whatever we have there with or rec dot width. That's our percentage. How about I do a console log of the percentage? None, not a number. 
Okay, means issue is happening here. There is some issue. So I guess the issue is basically being that the timeline container dot current dot get bonding link should as should have an x value of zero. Okay. But I think it doesn't have the x value of zero, it has the x value of four to thirty five. Maybe that's creating an issue. I mean, x value has to be something that whatever our video is located at. If it's like this, I want to call it this thing, x value is being 27.25 according to the screen, right? I mean, that's this thing is actually fine. There's no issues with this thing. I'm like container dot current dot get pounding length. That's what. Also, the log of the erect. React is showing up pretty good. It's gonna be the same for all the time. Just different if we are different screen things, then it's gonna be different. Right? Yep. Now it means React is perfectly fine. And we need to see about the E. If we're getting the event perfectly fine. Are we getting the X? We are not getting X, right? So we have two options. We have a page X or page Y. We have here screen X or screen Y. So we probably need a cutting to a page, right? I don't mean to make it mobile display. I just meant to make it a little bit more smaller. I'm calling a lot of events eventually when, 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 when we keep calling for them. So we have your client X and the client Y. I think we probably need the client X. I hope it works fine now. Not sure though. Yeah. Okay, so using here this space is going to be by default none. What I do like that. So we're getting to see preview image of this thing. A little bit of issues we're seeing here. If we are on the timeline itself, then it's going to be perfect. If we know move our mouse outside of the timeline, it's not going to be perfect. So we need to fix that thing also. And we want our display to be none as by default, right? And then once we are trying to do change something, trying to do something else, we want to change it. So now actually how are we going to do that? So we're going to have here a variable. In the JavaScript, we're going to have a variable with the name of is scrubbing is going to be by default you know just like define we'll just define is scrubbing is by default going to be false is scrubbing just means like you know yes you're scrubbing means you're just you know moving your you just dragging that uh you know red circle here and there that's about what is, is scrubbing means and we'll say another variable with the name of uh, let was paused 
So I'll define it in the future. I'll just tell you what it's the use of this thing. But for now, what we want to do, we want to have when I use this is scrubbing server, right? So we'll inside of our toggle mouse move, we're just setting about this preview thing, and we'll say if is scrubbing. I will say I will define is scrubbing in uh, another another section. We're just having here the just for the movement section. So we're just saying is if it's scrubbing, then what I want to do, I want to say first of all prevent default. That means what's going to happen if you're you know if we are scrubbing through our video, I don't want our I don't want them to select anything else like this like thing, blah blah stuff like that. I'm going to prevent default every single thing else. That's the basic concept of this thing. And then what I want to do, I want to have my thumbnail image set it as my current preview image. So how is that possible? I want to say just select my thumbnail image dot current dot src is going to be equal to my preview image final okay and my timeline container dot current dot style we're going to set up a new uh, set property is going to be set property is going to be our progress position like how much we have progressed is going to be decided using our person so what is currently happening we're just saying whenever we are scrubbing you know when we are going through the video we're, we're just dragging this thing from right to left stuff like that and once wherever we just kept it you know we left it here I want my this length you know this red thing to be all the way over this thing all the way over to this position I don't want it to go back again and once we left our mouse so that's the basic thing of doing this thing okay so we had our mouse down also and this is our mouse down effect and in the mouse down what we're gonna do first of all we wanna have the same things that we did as we did here the rect and the percentage. We're gonna get both of them here also. But here is going to be a little bit more different things. We're gonna have first of all, is scrubbing is being equal to if e of buttons is left. So I'll just explain it in a minute. Say console.log event mouse down and mouse down again. So just you know, this event is being only called once we ever actually click on mouse and we just hold it or just leave it. It doesn't matter. It's you know, listening about two mouse mouse you know image one time. So what is at the buttons effect here? So buttons is here you can see buttons are showing as one because I click with the my right with the uh, left click of my button with my mouse. I click with the right click. You can see buttons is two. So basically. Whenever, okay, let me just click with the middle button. Now, button C4. So we know when we right click, we know when we just click with our left mouse button here, the buttons option is actually being one. So I want to check if it's one, then only I'm saying, like, yeah, he's the video is the user is actually trying to, you know, go, you know, actually trying to, you know, uh, drag this video here and there. If he's trying to do it with, if it is left mouse, that means he's not trying to do. He's not trying to drag it anywhere, like because the buttons is not one. So I'm just saying, if e of buttons equal to one, then what I wanna do basically, if it's equal to one, which means he's trying to using using his, he's trying to do this with his left mouse button. Let's say e of buttons if it's equal to one, it means true or false. And here we have we need to say. I guess this you know button should be doing it. Then we what we're doing, we'll add a class to our video container with the name of scrubbing because we'll be adding some CSS. Later on we'll just say our video container dot current dot class list dot toggle scrubbing and we'll just make it true or false according to our is scrubbing this thing. So if you're trying to you know drag or drop or drag you know, over uh, video from here and there using our left mouse button. We don't want to add the scrubbing. We'll just keep it as false here, so it will not, you know, add this. It will not toggle up a scrubbing class list into a video class list. But if it's true, then it's gonna toggle it out and add it. And then we'll have if scrubbing, if we're actually scrubbing, right? S C R U B B I N G. If is scrubbing, then what I wanna do? I wanna say first of all. Was paused is going to be if the video was actually paused. Okay, so we need to check if the video the user has currently paused the video or if the play video is being played and he's just trying to drag and drop. So 
we need to, we need to have here action. Action is going to be what like if the video is being if the video is in play position and video in the and the user is you now dragging the cursor from the in the on a, you know, in my timeline and whenever he just left leaves the mouse button, I want the video to keep playing. If the video was paused, I want it to be paused. So that's basic concept here. We're just saying was paused variable here. We define it. We should get the value of this pause thing. And then what do we want to do? Want to say video pause. I want to pause the video till I I have done my scrubbing because I don't want the video keep, to keep playing while we are scrubbing, right? When we are just dragging our cursor here and there. Otherwise, if we are not currently scrubbing, then what I want to do basically, I want to okay, okay. If we are not scrubbing, then what we have, what we want to do, first of all, we want to make sure our video time, our video current time is set to wherever we left our mouse cursor. Let's say video dot current dot current time should be equal to our person multiplied by our video duration dot video dot current dot duration. So this is exactly going to give us back like what is what should be our video current time. So video dot current video dot current duration is going to give us the whole video uh, time. Uh, not actually whole video time. It's like the our whole video percentage. Not actually percentage. I mean like moment. I'm so confused. It's going to give us our whole video length in seconds. And this person is basically going to be you know this thing wherever we we just dragged and our mouse stuff like that. And then we need to set up a current time to person multiplied by video dot thing is it's going to give us back the exact location that we are currently and we'll say if the video was not paused then what I want to do I want to say video play if it was paused then the video the user has to play this video by himself okay now we need to set up a little bit of CSS here we need to go to the global CSS and we need to set up a little bit of CSS first of all it's going to be if user is actually scrubbing the video like User is trying actually grabbing uh, the this cursor right here is going through here and there. What I want to do, I want to just make my thumbnail image that's going to be what is going to be shown here as a blurry image, stuff like that. I want to have its displays block because by default it's just going to be none, right? Okay, here we just said display none for the thumbnail image. So I want to say here if video container dot scrubbing it contains the class of scrubbing, then I want to then I want my thumbnail image display to be block so it is going to be the same for our preview image if it's we're currently scrubbing then I want to apply something to my preview image also for the scrubbing I want to say my preview image should be display block and uh, same goes for you know, if I'm just hovering over my video Actually, not a video container. If I'm hovering over my timeline container, I want to show my preview image displays block, right? Because otherwise, I don't want to show my display there. I just want to keep it none. Okay. Okay, we got those things here. And now we need to have a kind of like a t uh, before and after effects. So I need, I need to show the before effect, like this video before effect. One second. Oh. Holy crap, my aunt just came to attack me. So we're just saying by default the timeline and uh, it's going to have a, in, in, the, in, the, in the before section it's going to, its display is going to be none. So before just like you know our the silver thing. So what is the silver thing going to be like we, we're just hovering our mouse here and there and what do we, uh, we can see now this thing is actually working fine. This thing. So what do you want to do once we're you know, hovering our mouse here and there? We, I want a little bit of silver. I want my silver line to be from the Starting tool here, that silver like you know it exa exactly shows where we are in the video. So on that thing to have a display of block. So how do we do that? I'm gonna go a little bit down, and here I just have to say dot video container if it has a scrubbing a scrubbing class, and I want my timeline before to have a display of block. And same thing goes for the hovering. If we're just hovering over the video, I want to do the same thing. Now you can see it just goes like that. This is what is happening. I know there's a lot of bugs, but I mean, yeah. 
it's working that's what we want to see right so till now things are uh, seem uh, uh, things seem to be working pretty fine now we need to add last thing that's going to be our timeline should get a height so by default our timeline has a height of 3 pixels but once we actually know hovering over it or scrubbing over it I want my timeline to have a height of 100 pixels 100, uh, 100 person not actually 100 pixels so I can say something like our oh, video container dot scrubbing on my timeline or if the condition is we're just hovering over I want to say height for my timeline should become 100 percent something like that you can see once we're just hovering over this thing its height become 100 percent other than just being like 8 percent stuff like that looks well, good to me I know there's a hell of issue with this little button right there okay video dot pause it on is not a function yep I need to say video dot current dot pause video dot current dot play let's see how it goes you refresh from drag and drop here and there you can see I'm getting to see my preview in there upside and on the below side I'm also getting to see my preview but if I leave this video section it's not as drag and drop it is only working if I'm exactly on this timeline so how do I fix this issue well to fix this little bit of issue what we have to do we need to go back we need to have event listeners for our on our document itself so we need to go to our use effect hook in here we need to have okay, we're having a document of full screen change we need to have two event listeners on our documents okay so one is going to be for our document dot add event listener for our mouse move it is just going to be our toggle mouse move function is going to call that function no so we don't want to call we don't want to keep calling this toggle mouse move function every single time when we're even not scrubbing right we want to make sure first of all that we are actually scrubbing well so if uh, scrubbing is true then I want to call this toggle mouse move function with giving the e with giving the element so I just make sure that it's the, the they are currently scrubbing, you know. I'm mean, like they're currently drag and drop here and there. Otherwise, it is going to call out cause a lot, lot of chaos. I'll just show you that thing in a minute. Mouse down toggle mouse down function. And now this thing should have fixed this thing. Not really. Okay, let me see what's happening here. Okay. Total scrubbing. And we have for this one, if mouse is moving, I'm going to call the total mouse move function. I didn't listen to mouse move and the mouse down. If it's scrubbing, then I want to just do the things. Okay, we're just not defining is scrubbing. We'll just say do 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 for this thing. Based at the very end moment. Okay, still is not fixed. We're not getting to see anything, any results. We're just seeing here uh, document that we added listener. For mouse move when you get the E and if it's scrubbing. If it's scrubbing is true, something like that. Oh okay, okay, that's my bad. Here we're just saying E dot buttons is if it's equal to one. I need to say if E dot buttons and one. So just like a kind of like a binary uh, uh, stuff where we do for selecting a right or left mouse button. So yeah, when you do that. I'm not sure if that even was an uh, issue. Things we you know moving properly fine. If I just keep moving it like that, but outside it, it's not just moving. And if even I, I left my mouse 
I left my mouse, it's just still going here and there. Well, that's just bad to see, to be honest. We're having, we're just getting to see a lot of bugs that we don't even expect to see. Let's face the bugs. We're saying at the class is scrubbing. If it, here is, we are scrubbing actually. E dot buttons and one. If is scrubbing, if we are scrubbing, I want to make my pause to be whatever what my video is currently ha doing. Then I want to pause my video. Otherwise, I will say get my video current time. It should be equal to my personal multiplier that thing, and that's working pretty fine. How about my toggle mouse move button? Mouse move options. So that's just saying get the person, get the thing. Preview image num image number is going to be over math or max. Stuff like that is working pretty fine. And at the end, we're saying for the if is scrubbing. I'm saying implement default and then image terminal image source is going to be preview image source and then we're just closing the thing. Oh my bad. Once we are toggling this thing, once we're actually toggling this mouse down here, and I want to call my this mouse move effect event at the end of this thing because once we click somewhere, I want to call this mouse move event. I want to pass the E. I mean, I know it's not going to fix a lot of things, but still, it's going to be pretty fine. It's like you know, we left a mouse somewhere, and okay, this is a lot of chaos to be honest. Holy crap! I wasn't expecting this much of chaos. So what is wrong? What is wrong in here? Um. On our timeline container, we're having on mouse move function and on mouse down function. Okay. Mouse down and mouse move. Oh, exact. Actually, we don't have a mouse down option for here at the main listener. We need to use the mouse up when we leave our mouse. We want to call this function once we leave our mouse. Okay. Well. Let me try to fix the bug and I will come back.